today's topic is separating solutions. <laughs> so today let's talk about separating ions and solution. Sometimes we need to separate ions uh, from solutions and often we want to remove the ions one by one by means of precipitation. So let's have a look at an example. For instance, here we have a solution with some uh, strontium ions, uh, calcium ions, and uh, silver ions uh, present. The question we have is which compounds could be added to this solution and in which order to remove these cations, these metal ions, one by one. So in order to get a good procedure, I'd highly recommend you use a table that looks like this one. So here's our table, just quickly draw it up, and on the left-hand side we'll have the metal cations. The idea is to refer to our table of solubility rules, which you all recall from before, and try to determine which anions to add in which order to get precipitates out one by one. So here is our set of solubility rules. You can see the chloride ion here is with the silver plus ion insoluble. So that one is a way for us to get the silver ion out. It's soluble with all the others, the chloride, so that'll be okay. So we put sodium chloride in and get the chloride ion and that will make a precipitate of silver chloride with a silver. After that, the silver ion will be removed from the solution. Now we'll do the second step. Go down here and find that the hydroxide ion is soluble with uh, strontium two plus ion, but with all others, for instance, our calcium, it uh, is insoluble. So it looks like we can use hydroxide ion then to remove the calcium and leave the strontium alone. So here we go, we'll use the hydroxide ion and we'll use sodium hydroxide to get that ion and we'll reduce or remove the calcium uh, in the form of calcium hydroxide here and leaving the strontium alone. The sulfate we can use with the strontium and uh, precipitate that one. Notice we also would get it precipitated with calcium, so we can only do this after the calcium has been already removed. So with this one here, we'll get the sulfate ion and we can make a uh, precipitate of strontium sulfate uh, by adding sodium sulfate to the solution. So there are a few points that we need to be very careful with. And the first point is order matters. Really matters, for example, the sulfate um, there on the strontium and the calcium. So we pay attention to order. Uh, second, if possible, uh, use a common cation in the compounds that are added. In this case, we used sodium so that you don't create just another mix of metal cations even more difficult to separate than the cations you started out to separate. So we'll just use the same metal there if possible. Also, notice the table above gives you the nanonic equations if you read it carefully, or at least it leads to them for each step. So let's have a look for uh, the first example. So we added the sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride was formed. Well, there's the silver ion and the chloride ion giving you silver chloride. Notice in the table from above, there's a silver, the chloride, and the silver chloride. The elements of this net ionic equation are there in the table. You just read them off and write them down. So anyway, that's the technique. And even with more complex scenarios with more ions, uh, this strategy of using a table and keeping track of the precipitation reactions that occur at each step certainly makes separating the ions in solution uh, quite doable. It isn't everything, of course. Um, in order to get the ions separated, you do need to, between each precipitation reaction, filter the solution so that each precipitate is collected separately. So precipitation reaction, filter, and then on to the next one. Anyway, that's about it. If you've uh, digested all of that, thanks everybody, and see you soon. Have a look at the next two videos in this playlist for more and stay tuned for our next lesson, Lesson 14, Solubility Equilibrium Calculations. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.